we know that DNA contains all the information for each cell in an organism. So that information is equivalent to the blueprints to make an entire house, or the recipes to cook an entire meal, or the instructions to build a toy. DNA is the instructions for life, and that's for life of any organism, including you. So DNA is found in the nucleus of every living cell, and the structure is complicated and simple at the same time. So it's simple in that these components are really just four monomers over and over, and those are different only by the bases. A double helix of DNA can have thousands of those four nucleotides, but what makes organisms different from each other, what makes species different from each other, what makes humans different from each other is the order of those nucleotide bases. Although the structure looks complex, what it contains is simple, and yet the simplicity of this design allows for self-assembly of the three-dimensional DNA double helix structure from those nucleotide bases through complementary base pairing, and also for copying or replication of all of the DNA in an entire genome of an organism, which then allows for inheritance of all that information from one cell to the next in cell division, or from one generation to the next as DNA is inherited. And that's also through complementary base pairing. The information on the DNA for the human genome includes 3 billion bases three billion base pairs that have to be copied, and that's all of the information to make a human. Reading the information that's encoded on DNA, that guidebook, is not like reading a book. It is a secret code that scientists have cracked that secret code, that chemical code of DNA. So this DNA code is read like a book from one end to the other in one direction, and the alphabet is not our standard 26-letter alphabet. It's just those four letters, those four cleotide bases over and over, and what they build are not words, but what they build are three-letter codes that become amino acids that then build proteins. Three bases at a time are called a codon, and the codon is equivalent to one amino acid, and the amino acids are the monomers of proteins. And building proteins is the first step the letters in our English words have a di directionality. So C-A-T are the letters that are read cat, but it's not the same if it's read T-A-C, which is tack. So the same is true of DNA. And so this has to be read in this direction, these bases which are read A-U-G, A-A-C, U-U-C. It's not the same if it's read backwards. Just like a book is not read the same, it's not even possible to read it backwards. These bases are on RNA, which have one difference. Instead of ACTG, RNA is single-stranded. It's a copy of double-stranded DNA, and RNA has A, U, C, and G. All of that information carried on DNA that is represented as genes coiled up in a chromosome and then packaged neatly in the nucleus of a cell, carries all the information for an organism like a human. So now the question is, how is that information carried out from the nucleus? So we know that the DNA is stored inside of the nucleus, and the function of DNA is to just store the information, and that information is stored safely in the double helix structure, and then also in the nucleus, which is inside the cell. So that's all good for storage and maintaining all the information of an organism, but it doesn't exactly work when it comes to carrying out the information. The DNA stays in the nucleus, and a different molecule has to exit the nucleus with that information. The double helix structure is great in that it is maintained with hydrogen bonds, it's self-assembling, it's self-replicating, it can be stored for millions of years, However, it's not so great for carrying out the information. The double helix structure is actually kind of stuck inside of the nucleus, which is what you might want 
you want if you want your information all your information you want that stored very carefully if you think about the information on your uh, computer you take care of that information or i hope you do dna is copied by replication through complementary based pairing dna is also copied in what's called transcription also through complementary based pairing but instead what's made in the process of transcription is a single strand and this single strand, which is called RNA, is very close to DNA. So DNA is two strands, but RNA is only one strand. And being only one strand allows the information to exit the nucleus. So the double strand is stuck in there. But this single strand RNA can exit the nucleus through some specialized holes and with action of enzymes. But this will exit the nucleus and go out into the cell. Out in the cell is where the information is carried out and made into proteins and enzymes and anything that has a function in the organism. So the process of translating the DNA bases, the information in triplet codons, into amino acids to make a functional protein, that's called translation. Much as you would translate from one language to another language. The language of DNA and RNA is written as bases and read as triplet codon, but the language of proteins is in amino acids. The sequence of DNA bases, which is unique and important, that becomes transcribed into a sequence of bases on RNA, which is still unique and important, but it's a different language than the sequence of amino acids that make up proteins. 